What's up guys, this is Bobby Douglas and welcome to another edition of a 2020 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. And today we're going to be taking a look at Gonzaga veteran big man Killian Tilly. And Tilly obviously has had a very nice career at Gonzaga. I think he was a freshman on that 2017 National Championship team. He seems like he's been there forever and he has been. Uh, was a very productive player when he stayed healthy, however injury concerns and injuries plagued him throughout his entire career. He had a hip hip pointer, he had a bunch of knee soreness, ankle sprains, uh, I think he had knee surgery once or twice as well, so just a lot of injuries um, to be aware of with Tilly, and when he's healthy and he's looking fluid, he's a very solid prospect, but his main thing is just going to be uh, monitoring that health and making sure that he stays injury free, or at least keeps his injury injuries to a minimum uh, in the NBA compared especially to what he was like in college. So with that, the game I picked out today is against San Diego, and Tilly only plays 22 minutes. He wasn't a heavy minutes guy because Gonzaga did have him uh, on a minutes, a quasi minutes restriction while he was there for a senior year. And in this game, he has 12 points, I believe seven rebounds. I just want to get that right. 12, 12.6 rebounds a block, four assists and a turnover in only 22 minutes. So with that, let's get right to it. So he's going to be number 33 in the white. He just caught the ball and gave it to Ryan Woolridge. He's going to set a pin down right here into a ball screen. The thing with Tilly is that I think he's a very good uh, mover of his feet, especially laterally. He has pretty quick feet. He was a, His parents were both volleyball players, I want to say. And so he has a pretty quick first jump. He's not a very vertical guy, but he does get off his feet rather quickly. He has really nice instincts and reaction time uh, to certain defensive plays, and that makes him a strong team defender. He could also switch on guys in some spots. And so I think his versatility is a little bit underrated. And again, it's really just about staying healthy and being, uh, just being uh, on the floor. Let's see what he does here. Again, he has a pretty nice handle. Let's see what he does. He's in the post. I'm going to back his guy down and probably could have gotten that shot off a little bit cleaner, but I do like the form. Again, he was a 40% 40, 40 three-point shooter this past year, and he shot over 50% from the floor in general. So he was a highly efficient player, again, around 13.6 points a game along with uh, five rebounds and close to two assists. Right there, pretty nice defense and uh, contest on that shot. And so there are a lot of things to like about Killian Tilly. It's just the injuries are really going to be a concern, I think, moving forward, just because there's been so many of them, and it's plagued him almost every single year he was at Gonzaga. So got a foul on the ground here, so I'll skip this. And there's a nice little uh, runner by Corey Kispert. So Tilly mostly guarded Big Zach and Zaga, but he is capable of stepping out and hanging, uh, hanging by himself on the perimeter at times as well. Again, his versatility, I think, is really understated and undervalued. But in the NBA, I think he, he, could be, he can definitely be a plus defender. Let's see what he does right here. Again, on the guard, really nice job moving his feet, hand fighting a little bit, and he got a really nice contest on that as well. And there's Joel Yai, who is another prospect in my top 100. I expect him to return to school, however. It's gonna, you just see him bang down low with San Diego's big man, and then come out and guard on the perimeter. He's also a very smart basketball player. I think he didn't really show it a whole lot at Gonzaga, but I do think he's very capable of making really nice reads and really good passes, out of the post especially. And so, again, I just think he has such a unique skill set. Again, being able to move laterally and guard on, per on the perimeter in spots, being able to shoot the ball really well, it, both from inside and outside being able to distribute, you know. There's just a lot of things that Killian Tilly does well, and so I don't think a guy like that can really fail in the NBA. Here we go. So again, Tilly was good job boxing out right there, and, you yeah. know. And right there, it's going to be a Gonzaga turnover. Tilly hasn't done much thus far. He did have that nice uh, defensive possession we saw earlier. 
And there's Corey Kispert, who's another guy on my top 100. I think I have him closer to the bottom, obviously, but he's another guy I expect to. Um, I expect him to return to Gonzaga. And so the thing is, too, with Tilly, he's 6'10", 220, but they can put him next to Philip Petrusev, who's more of a traditional big guy, and they won't lose anything defensively in terms of their switchability or shooting. Because Petrusev is, isn't really a shooter. He's rather slow-footed. And Tilly's going to knock down that three straight out of a pick-and-pop. Really nice play from him right there. But, you know, he's just a very versatile big man, and he offers you a lot of things that you can... He, he's very lineup lineup proof so that means I don't really think he could be exploited in against any single matchup or any play style and so again right now he's hanging on the perimeter right there he got called for a foul but he did a nice job moving his feet I don't think there's going to be a uh an and one there but again I thought he did a nice job moving his feet just suck his leg out but we'll see this three point or never mind uh yeah here's a three point so again it's just a simple pick and pop and Killy has a really nice stroke, really nice backspin, and he knocks that one down. And Tilly was out right there for a few minutes, so I just skipped ahead. And here we go. So again, you can see him offering help from the top right there. That wasn't really on him. He was just more of an auxiliary defender, more than the principal guy. And here we are right here again. He has pretty nice perimeter skills. I think he has a nice touch uh, with the ball in his hands. Obviously, he can pass the ball. He has nice ball skills, you know, guard-like in a way. And so I think he's a guy who's comfortable on the perimeter, kind of creating for himself and others. Doesn't really have separation or burst, I would say, but I think he can hold his own without looking like a total spaz out there. And so again, right there, maybe a little bit slow on that. And again, looked like a miscommunication, but, you know, he doesn't really have super quick burst. He's just more, he's more light on his feet than anything. And so just being that light on his feet just allows him to stay in front of guys. But in terms of his overall speed and everything, it's pretty average or below average. But just the lightness on his feet, which, which he plays, it's, it does help him a lot. And that's why I do think he's a pretty switchable guy, at least in some spots. So again, San Diego State, or San Diego, excuse me, is just kind of running a four out, one in. Tilly's pretty much right there on every box out. He's comfortable guarding on the perimeter. You know, there's just a lot of things to like with him. I think he also has four assists in this game, so we'll see a little bit of that playmaking ability. It's not super dynamic, but it's just, it just smart. Looks like we got a timeout for Gonzaga or a jump ball. Looks like they're not going to commercial, though. And again, Tilly right there comes through almost an elevator screen. And right there, another pick and, pick and uh, roll-ish type of play. Here he's just banging down low. Nice little floater. Tends to get a little... A, tends to kind of just mole his way into the defender's chest which I'm not really sure how much he could get away with that at the NBA just because the guys are a lot stronger than clearly people are for San Diego uh, men's basketball but you know he does have that way of just kind of like lowering his shoulder so I think he does give himself up to flops uh, and easy turnovers and then obviously in the NBA I don't think he's gonna be able to move bodies as well as he did at Gonzaga Right there, you saw he was a little bit late on the drop coverage. Um, I don't know what the final result was, but he just was a little bit out of position right there. But there are a bunch of ways a team could use Tilly, so that's why I do like him. And... You know, in terms of NBA comparisons, usually I don't like to do it, but this one I kind of have a unique one that maybe not a lot of people will be expecting or really understand. But I'm kind of looking at Killian Tilly as a a slightly less dynamic uh, Doug McDermott. And not in, look, so I do think Tilly has that ability to be a 
uh, shooter around screens. And Doug McDermott, you see, you've seen him be used all the time in the NBA coming off of screens. And he was a back-to-basket guy more or less in college. He obviously had the three-point shot, and he shot it very well. He was a three-level scorer at Creighton. But he was a guy who would go in there, and he would bang down low, and he would get easy buckets wherever on the floor they could get him. So Tilly's kind of like that, too. He does have that three-point shot. And he obviously is a very good back-to-the-basket player as well. But you saw the Doug McDermott really adapted well to the modern NBA because he was, I believe, a lottery pick. And listen, like he was kind of doughy. He was 6'8", and that wasn't really going to get it done for him in the NBA. So he became really just a Kyle Korver-type player. Not obviously as good as Kyle Korver, but a guy who would just run around screens and shoot uh, and get open, screen, open shots off of pin downs. And I think Killian Tilly, he's not maybe as quick as... Doug McDermott on the perimeter, but I do think Tilly can offer a little bit of that, and that's so I, I would say Doug McDermott is, I'm not saying it's a true comparison, but I'm saying it is a Killian Tilly, I see shades of Doug McDermott uh, and Tilly. I think right there he also had an assist, a nice little drop down pass to Petrusev, and he got that one to go. So you're silly on the perimeter. That's a really nice pass. Right in the bread basket. Right over to the defender. Right to Pet, uh, Petrusev. And he got it down. That's a really nice. Again, this that just showcases the touch that Tilly does possess. And you saw it right there. Good job getting back and contesting. Maybe a little bit beat off the dribble. Looked like he was going left and his defender went the other way. But uh, decent contest. The shot just went in. So again, right there, you saw him put it on the floor. Not really uh, a quick burst guy. Good offensive rebound. Let's see if he finishes it. Yeah, that's that's an awesome play from Tilly. Uh, just read the defense well, kicked it out to the open three-point shooter. That missed, and then ultimately got his own got that rebound, and he put it back with a nice little right-handed floater. Good touch all around from Tilly, I would say. They don't have the pictures in front, so I can't, uh, ah. yeah, here we go, they don't have the pictures, this is a different website than YouTube, so they don't have the pictures, so I can't, like, tell when the game restarts, nice shot muscling through that screen, and looks like we got a foul, So Tilly just monitoring in the paint. Good job to stalking and getting that rebound again. He's pretty aware defensively. Head's always on a swivel. Doesn't really tends to be upright a little bit, but and right. So right there, that's just a perfect example of why I love Tilly so much. Uh, just got the ball rip and run. Just got to his spot. Not super quick, but he's proficient with that dribble, and it gets him to an easy layup where he does make it. Right there, good instinctual reach and then getting back. And he was there to cut off that shot opportunity. And so Tilly's in a corner right now. Let's see if they get it to him. They will. Two guys. So again, comfortable dribbling around the perimeter. And he's got that awesome three-point shot, obviously. Right there, that was a dump down to uh, Petrusev, who knocked in a little turnaround hook. But again, if he can really just... Actually, no, I'm not going to say it. I don't think he's really an off the dribble shooter type of guy. He's more of a pick-and-pop guy or catch-and-shoot. But his stroke is just so clean, and he's shown in this game already that he can put it on the floor. Right there, that's a pretty... Right there, the execution wasn't really there. That was kind of a busted play for Gonzaga, but I do like that he paused before trying to force that DHO. 
in there. He did make the right read. It was just a little bit too cramped to make that pass, so maybe he should have held it. But I like the way he was thinking on that play because Gilder was open on that cut for limit uh, uh, primarily, but it just, you know, maybe just tried to force it in a little bit uh, into a little bit too tight of a window. But I like the way he was thinking. Another pick and pop who we could have shot that. Good job slipping that screen. Let's see what he does here. Yep, really nice pass. Perfect skip pass. He notices the guy next to him, cuts towards the basket. That leaves open a little gap for Admin Gilder. And Killy gets that to him, and he knocks down to three and rewards Tilly with the assist. Really nice play from Tilly. Again, you can totally see his basketball IQ was really good. You know, makes the right reads. Uh, skilled. He just seems like the modern NBA big, and I really like him because of that. The reason why I have him so low on my board, I have him just outside the top 50 at 51. And the reason why I have him so low is just because of the injuries. The injury concerns are major with him. So if he's healthy, could sneak his way into the first round. But obviously that wasn't the case. And so it's a shame, but I hope he, I hope he does get his, uh, his chance in the NBA. And I think he will. So again, he's onto a smaller guard, switched really well. Again, was light on his feet, you know, no heavy stepping. And he had a nice contest there as well. And then this is Drew Timmy on the blocks. But again, another, Drew Timmy's another guy where they could, uh, where he's more of a traditional center. And Killian Tilly had no issues playing with him just because of that versatility. And you could honestly probably play Killian Tilly at the three in some spots with this Gonzaga team. What a pass. I don't know who made that pass, but Kisper with a nice finish. I'm not saying he could do that in the NBA, but with this Gonzaga team, he could. In spots, obviously that's not your primary option or lineup. But in certain, er I, in certain situations, I think you could run a big lineup and you could have Tilly at the three, Timmy at the four, and then Pe uh, Petrusev at the five. And we got a foul on Tilly right here, and I believe he is out for the remainder of the half. So I'll end the first half video here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think Killian Tilly is a pretty fun player to watch just because of his IQ, his overall skill level, and just his touch with shooting and passing. And obviously, he's a very nice defender as well. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you for the second half where he doesn't play a whole lot, but it's enough. And yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the second half.